Hi you rates. So we are now going to move on to buttons. So it will be this sheet in your year 8 skills booklet. Alright, and to complete this task you will need one piece of thread and I have put two marks on here for where I would like to sew both of my buttons. You will again need a hand needle and some thread. So this is the thread left over from last time and I don't think it's going to be enough. So if it's not in that case, just pull it off and you can get some more again. And for this sample, you are going to need two different types of buttons. So you can either have a button that has two holes or you can have a button that has four holes. And then I also have this button here that on this side, it's a nice little round button. But then on the bottom, it has got a little tab and a little loop where the needle will go through down the bottom. It kind of looks like a little mushroom. Okay, so the difference is that there are different ways to secure both of these types of buttons on. The trick for securing the four hole button and the two hole button are quite similar but when it comes to putting on this button with the little hole at the bottom okay the little loop all right it's a bit trickier it's up to you what you would like to use for your sample if you want to do all three types of buttons i'm more than happy for you to do that so as per usual you will need some scissors as well and we are going to grab an arm's length worth of thread Okay, we're going to cut it and we are going to thread it through our hand needle. So just one tip before you start going is make sure that your hand needle is able to fit through the holes of the buttons because you would hate to come to it and the needle actually can't go through the hole of the button. So mine fits perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread, put the thread through the needle just like you would in the sewing machine so it can take a bit longer okay and I'm going to pull both sides down so that they are nice and even and then tie a loop at the end beautiful so I've now got a knot at the end okay and I've got my buttons so we are going to start we're going to start underneath on the wrong side of the fabric, okay, the calico it's a bit hard to tell the right and wrong side, but this side I've got my markings, so the wrong side is back here. So first of all we need to secure the thread to make sure that it's going to stay in place. So just like we did for tacking, it's going to be a quick in and out, okay, and then through the loop. But we're going to go in and out twice and then through the loop so that it is nice and secure. So make sure that you're doing this in the place where you would like the um, button to go. So I'm starting from the bottom, the wrong side of the fabric, and I'm going quick up and straight back through. So this is what it should look like on the needle. All right, it's only just in and out a little bit, okay? And I'm going to pull it through and it will stay there. I'm then going to go in and out a little bit again. And see how I've got this loop forming just here okay the needle is then going to go through that loop pull it tight and now there is a big knot at the bottom and it is nice and secure so from the front it only looks like two little stitches there you can't really see okay so now I'm going to do the button with two holes all right so I'm going to hold this button in place just over where I would like the um, button to be placed onto the fabric. So now, the hard bit about this is trying to line up the needle coming through the fabric and through the hole of the button and back out, okay? So take your time and just make sure that you're being careful not to prick your fingers. So I'm coming up from the wrong side through to the good side. The thread is through the first hole of the button and it's just sitting securely there, okay? So pull it tight. I'm then going to go down the other side of the button, okay, and pull it tight. So now my thread is on the wrong side of the fabric on the back, and my button, if you can see, has got one loop of thread through the middle of it, and it's on there securely. 
So you are going to go up and over and around and around and around about eight times to secure the button in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to do that eight times and it will be a good time for you to pause and do so as well. So this is my last stitch. So I've come up through the button and back over the top of the little bridge and down onto the wrong side. So from the bottom, you can see my little beginnings. So my little bits of thread that are hanging off the side here. That's where I started. And you can see a big ball of thread. And then from the front, you can see the black thread that is through the middle of the button and it's actually being held on quite securely. So we need to make sure that buttons are held on quite securely because often they are on tops or even on pants where there's a lot of pressure, okay? And so things like buttoning up shirts, you don't want the button to be loose because you could be popping it through the hole and it falls off, okay? So now we need to secure the thread again, just like what we did at the beginning. So we are going to go down and up, just up and through the thread with the needle, as you can see. We're going to do that once. We are going to do that twice, so just in and out. And then see, I've got this little loop here, and we're going to put the needle through the loop, pull it tight, and then that has knotted it. Our button is now finished and we can trim the thread off. So I've trimmed the thread fairly close, about half a, half a centimetre, sorry. Okay, and the button is now looking good at the front. And at the back, all you see is a big um, kind of knot of thread. But as long as it's hidden from the front, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that is one button. The next button that we are going to be looking at is our little kind of mushroom button here with the little hole at the bottom, okay? And so this is a bit harder to thread on and to secure purely because it doesn't have the space like this button to actually hold it down, okay? It's only held on by this little loop at the bottom, all right? So it might seem a bit wobbly and not as tight. So. Again, I didn't have enough thread on my needle, okay, so I'm going to get another arm's length of thread, going to chop it, and I'm going to thread it onto my needle, and I have checked, my needle definitely fits through the little loop at the bottom of this button. Pull it to make sure that both ends are meeting and tie it into a knot again. Now, we are going to start the exact same way that we did for the other buttons. So, we're going to start from the wrong side of the fabric, okay? And we're going to do, find where I've marked where I want the button to be, and we're going to do a quick in, in and out with the needle. So, you can see there, it's come in and it's come out. We're going to do this twice and through the loop. So in and out, in and out, and through. So in and out, in and out, and then we're forming the loop. That's my extra bit of thread there. Our loop is right here, and through both loops, and pull it tight. Okay, so now you can see we've got a knot, and we've got our little bit of thread there, okay? So we are going to come up from the wrong side up through to the good side of the fabric. Now the trick is with these, this button is quite small and my stitches at the front here, okay, I wanna make sure that they're small as well so that they're not going to be bigger than the button because the whole idea is that the button is attached and you're not meant to see the stitching, okay? so. I've now come up to the good side of my fabric and I'm now going to thread my button onto the top. So right now, it's just hanging on there, okay? Now, this is exactly the same as the other button. We are going to go from the good side through to the bottom, okay, through to the wrong side and up again, okay, through the button every single time. So I have now, I'm on the good side. I'm now going to go down through to the wrong side and pull tight and watch my button will secure in. I'm now going to come up from the wrong side and through to the good side, making sure that I'm staying pretty close. And then loop it through the needle 
the needle through the button, sorry, and back down onto the wrong side. Okay, so you're going to do this eight times, all right, to secure the button in place. So I don't know if you can see on the side there, but I'm coming up and through, all right, and the button is secure, well, getting secure. Okay, so do that eight times. Okay, so I have now secured my button on eight times. So it's got eight lots of thread. Okay, and as you can see, you can see the black thread. So obviously, if this was a button and I really wanted to hide it, it's orange. So I might choose a thread that's orange or white. That kind of matches it. All right, and as you can see, it's really secure on there. And all you can see at the back is again a little patch of stitching and the little end of the thread that we started off with. So remember, how do we secure the fabric like uh, the thread? Sorry, like we have done every other time. It is going to be a quick one, two, so in and out once, pull it tight, in and out again, and then on this second time. Our loop has formed and we are threading the needle through the loop and pulling down to secure our knot. Okay, we can then trim the thread nice and close, about half a centimetre away, trim both sides to neaten it up. All right, and hopefully from the front, you can't see any thread, but you can see that both of our different types of buttons are secure. And on the back, you can see our two patches of stitching okay that's very close together all right and it needs to be close together to keep it nice and neat so if you were now to move on and if you wanted to sew on a button with four holes it is the same as you did for the button with two holes okay so you will put the thread um, through two holes on one side and you will do that eight times so going in and out and around eight times and then you will move over to the other side of the button so there will be two lots of stitching okay so it will look like this on one side and then again on the other side of the button or if you wanted to you could actually cross it over so on the diagonal you could use your thread and go in and out and around eight times again and secure it and then do the other diagonal side so it has that crisscross effect so it's totally up to you and you can choose what you would like to do so for today I am just doing the two buttons and if you want to push yourself and extend yourself further you could also sew on a third button okay and stick this sample into your book and answer the questions and then move on to the next one good luck